welcome back. I apologize for my absence. Unfortunately, it was not uh, intended. Uh, I've been fighting technology. Admittedly, you know, I'm a whole lot better with metal and, and cars and things of that nature. And when it comes to cameras and phones and audio recorders and computers, yeah, I'm not that great. So I ended up, my laptop has been in for repair for too long. And I've been using a borrowed laptop, which is very, very, very slow. Anyway, I have a ton of content that I've got, for the most part, edited. But uploading it has been a slow and arduous task. So please bear with me. Okay, welcome back. So this week we are going to finish the metal work in our cab. And then after that, we can start sanding it down and get it ready for primer. Okay, so I've been picking away at it. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. Um, I straightened out these brackets for the inner fenders. And I've taken just the uh, a wire cup brush on... My grinder and I've cleaned off all of the undercoating so there's some kind of neat stuff here like there's uh, right here a grease pencil mark and a number and there's a mark over here and then up here there was also it said 73 um, so yeah we're gonna have to fix a bunch of little stuff uh, I still have to put that bracket on here and there's going to be a couple holes here that we actually have to fill in. So that's the other thing we're going to have to work on. Uh, this lower bracket's rotted off. But uh, luckily, I was smart enough. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. I kept this section from my original cab. And as you can see, that is the bracket we need. So I will go ahead and drill the spot welds out of this one and pop that piece off. And uh, it's actually just as well that I kept this piece because I found a little rust hole here. So I'll take and cut a piece out of this for a patch. And that should fix that as well while we're here. Uh, there's a couple things we have to do to convert this cab over. So when I was down at the Kenny U pole there, that truck's an 88. So that thing is almost identical to my truck, right? Uh... So what I did was I took a Sawzall and I cut out some stuff that I needed for this cab. Because what we have to do is actually convert this cab from an 82 to an 87 cab, essentially, right? Because there is some differences. Uh, so I cut this section out here and I'll show you where it goes. So this goes right here. Right? And you'll notice the difference of where the hole is here. This is where our clutch master cylinder actually mounts. So this bracket goes, and then this hole is going to go. So we'll take all this, and we'll put this piece in here. I'll trim it to fit and everything. I just, it was easier to cut it this way. Right? And you can see that's a nice clean piece of metal too. So that's one thing we have to convert over because in 82 and 83, they're a mechanical clutch. So it just uses a cable. So we also have this piece, right? So that's gonna fill in that. However, I cut it a little bit bigger on purpose. So the reason I did that is, right? You can see where the gas pedal mounts and all that. But if we look at this end here, this is how this piece looks, right? You see the big hole there? That's where the computer goes in. All right? So as it is, this is all kind of thin at the bottom here. And this one's not. This is actually pretty clean metal. So this is kind of a two birds, one stone kind of thing. And you'll notice this section's rust free where that little hole is too. So... It means that we get to fix a bunch of things with one piece of metal. And it's original General Motors metal, which, you know, 
it doesn't mean a lot, but it, it means something to me anyway. Okay, so I got the brackets weld through primed. And what I've been working on over here is marking out what we have to drill. So there's the three spot welds and you can see there's another little hole here too. So it's a good thing we're replacing this bottom section. I've marked a couple more spot welds over here that we may have to drill. And I've marked out three holes here that no longer need to be here. So we can fill those holes and we can fill these holes. That'll all help us prepare for the next big job we'll be doing. So I'm not going to bore you with watching me drill these out because, I mean, you guys have watched me drill out a million spot welds. So I'll get that off and uh, we'll have a look and see what's behind it. Okay, so I've got our patch all trimmed up and what have you. Kind of ready to go in there. Get it weld through. Um, I've taken and cleaned up all this and shot it and weld through. I fixed the little hole that was here. And I prepared to fix a few of the other holes. And as you can see, I've got uh, my bracket ready to be welded in on this side. And here's a little trick with Clecos. If you want them to pull really tight, you can put a little washer behind them and it'll push them in a little further and make them a little tighter. So we can weld that in there. Got to weld these two holes up. Got to weld that one up. So we're, uh, we're rolling along here now. Okay, so after some time with the welder here, which I didn't bother to film it. I mean, you guys have watched me weld. I don't know how many panels and parts on this truck. So that's that welded on. You can see we got pretty good penetration here. And then if we go around the other side here, that is our new section put in. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world right now, um, but it sure beats what we found here. So when I cut that off, of course, we got all the rust here. We had this mess. So I would say that was well worth our time. Okay, so still working away here. What I've done is I've cleaned up where I welded that part of the firewall back together. And I've taken and ground this down a little bit. And I weld through primed where the bracket needs to go on. And I've started preparing this corner over here. Um, I actually had to get in here with a hammer and dolly. I didn't notice it until I started trying to fit the piece that goes in here. Um, but right in here, the cab was actually bent in a little bit. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was go in there with a, a hammer on the inside and kind of pop this all back out. And then I had to get in here with the hammer and dolly, hold the dolly in from this side and kind of tap this all out straight again. But yeah, I uh, didn't notice that till I went to fit it. So it's probably a good thing that we're in here messing around anyway. Uh, I'll have to, looks like probably straighten out this part here too, where our master cylinder and brake booster go. Looks like it's a little bit uh, euchred too, but uh, the next thing we can do is start fitting this piece to go in here now that it's it's actually straight. Um, yeah, it fits a lot better now. <laughs> it didn't fit worth anything before. And I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to take and trim this a little bit more. Um, probably down along this edge here, we'll take and straighten that out. And that should help us out quite a bit. But yeah, these are all the things that we find as we uh, we start repairing things. Okay, so I got everything marked out here, right? And one thing I'm gonna tell you is, when it comes to doing stuff like this, I try to make my lines as straight and square as possible because it makes it so much easier to cut it out. As you can see, Steering column hole lines up. So that's what we're going to replace. And then obviously I still have to fill these holes here, but that's that's not a big deal at the moment. So let's get that all cut out of there and uh, we can start preparing stuff to be welded.
Okay, that's what it looks like all welded in here. And I put the bracket back on over here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll weld up a couple of the little holes here, get those done. And then we're gonna make this corner piece. Okay, so that's all welded in there and what have you. Um, and all these holes are now filled. So now comes the not fun part. We gotta make this piece here. Uh, I've been putting off doing this because of the fact that not only does it have a 90 degree in it, but it also curves. So enough procrastination. Well, let's get going on it. Okay, so what I've done here, I've just taken my piece of sheet metal I cut and I kind of set it in here where it needs to go. And then I kind of gave myself an idea of where I need to put a bend in it, right? So, uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, I know it's a tool that most guys don't have, but it's a tool I do have. So it's a sheet metal break. And uh, what we're gonna do is kind of figure out sort of where our bend is gonna need to be. And we're just gonna go ahead and give it a partial bend. There's a reason for that. So that gives us kind of the start of our bend because we still have to make it so it curves. Okay, I want to show you the tool that we'll use to put the curve into our steel now that we have the 90 on it. Um, I've already done the piece for the truck, but I wanted to give you kind of a demonstration with a piece of scrap here. So as you can see, I just took and I put a 90 into it, right? So this is a shrinker stretcher. Um, this is the stretcher. Oh, sorry, this is the shrinker, this is the stretcher. We're gonna use the stretcher. And what you do is you just kind of put it in between the jaws here. And you just work it. Now the thinner the edge, the better it works. And I realize this is a tool that not everybody has, but before I had one, I used to just use a block of wood, right? So you'll see, hopefully anyway, that there's now a curve, right? So it's got a curve to it now. Right, which is what we want. So that's how that works. Okay, so that's it welded in there. And you'll see we have our curvature. So I'll clean all that up and I'll finish cleaning this part of it up and I'll clean up the spot welds um, for the brackets. But other than that, we basically have a very solid little truck now again. Um, the only other thing I have to do is a floor pan Right, I gotta fix that spot there, but as you can see, I have this piece to put in there. And uh, you'll have to come back next week to see that because I just don't have time to do that today. Okay, so firewall's fixed, cab corners are fixed, floor pan's fixed, uh, kick panel is fixed. 
that only leaves that section in front of the shifter uh, on the floor pan, which I will go ahead and put that in probably in the next day or so. Um, and then what we're gonna do is start sanding down the cab. So the firewall, the roof, uh, the back of it, everything like that. And we're gonna try and get all the loose crap off the floor pan on the inside and we'll dress out everything on the bottom of the cab. Um, get all that stuff cleaned up. And then we can start running some seam sealer and primer. So one of the other things I did is I've taken and pressure washed the box inside and out. So I got all the loose crap off it. And you'll notice they like to rot across the top lip here. So I have some patches I cut out of my original box and I'm gonna cut some more patches out of another truck. And in the near future, that's something else we'll be working on.